stood by volunteer match about how to become a social code volunteer champion for Giving Tuesday. We are thrilled to have you here. This is the first webinar of this kind that we've done, and we can't wait to dive in and talk about all the great ways to make a difference. My name is Shari uh, Tishman, and I am the Director of Engagement at Volunteer Match. Um, and uh, I'm the host for um, some of our webinar series here. A few logistics before I introduce our speakers. We will be recording this webinar. In fact, we're doing so right now. And we are going to be posting the recording to YouTube and the slide deck to slide share and sending it out to you all after the session. So don't worry about getting everything down in notes or missing part of it because you'll be able to watch it later and share it with family and friends to inspire everyone in your world to make a difference. So also, um, if you have questions during the session, please type them into that chat box at the bottom right of your screen in the GoToWebinar application. Or you can put them on Twitter using the hashtag VMLearn. And don't forget to use the Giving Tuesday hashtag as well, hashtag Giving Tuesday. We're going to save most of the questions for the end of the session, but don't worry, we've saved a lot of time for them, and so we'll get to all of your questions. All right, let's meet our speakers. So first up, we have Kursula Weiniger. She's a community manager for Giving Tuesday and founder of boutique digital strategy and project management agency called Wake Up World Communications, which is a really fun name. Um, and her company is focused on social change. Chrisula was a Babbel Top 25 Bloggers for Social Good, and she has a passion for new media and the power it can wield as a positive force in the world. She's the mother of four kids, a consultant, and an advocate, so she's very busy. Uh, you can find her stuff around the web at Huffington Post, the UN Foundation, and at When You Wake Up a Mother, which sounds like a really interesting read, and I'm going to go search it after this. So welcome, Chrisula. Thank you. Um, our next speaker is Greg Baldwin, the president of Volunteer Match. He joined what is now Volunteer Match in the spring of 1998 as the chief imagination officer. So that was a much more interesting title than his title now. Um, and he joined to finish hot wiring the internet to help everybody find a great place to volunteer. And Greg appreciates the power of a big idea. He began his career at the Leo Burnett advertising agency where many big ideas were born and later he tested his own big idea as a co-founder of 2D Interactive Inc., a Boston-based technology startup. Greg himself is a lifelong volunteer and regularly speaks at nonprofit events and conferences all about volunteering, communication, and the internet. Welcome, Greg. Thank you, Sherry Tishman. <laughs> Sherry, Cheryl, just got married. I just got married. I'm not used to my new name yet. She's still working on it. <laughs> Cheryl Timoney is the manager of pro bono employee engagement with the Salesforce.com Foundation, and she manages the pro bono the pro bono program that. Just in 2013 alone, it generated 8,000 pro bono hours of service for over 200 nonprofits all over the world, which is amazing. Prior to joining the Salesforce.com Foundation, Cheryl managed the service grant program at Taproot Foundation, which some of you may be familiar with already, overseeing over $5 million worth of professional services provided pro bono to more than 100 nonprofits to strengthen their marketing, human resources, information technology, and organizational strategy. Cheryl has developed a deep passion for nonprofit capacity building and for volunteer engagement over many years of directing community-based programs for low-income families and individuals in, here in the Bay Area in California. So welcome, Cheryl. We'll, we're thrilled to have you here with us as well. Thank you, and hi to everyone. Hi, Cheryl. So before we go over the agenda, I have one question for folks. Um, I think that you know this is such a cool topic that we're talking about today, and I think that the attendees of this webinar are probably really diverse. So just to get an idea of where everyone is coming from, can you type into your chat box at the bottom right, where, where are you right now in the world? OK, wow. I see Canada, Michigan, Boston, Texas, Maryland, 
Columbus, Ohio, San Francisco, Mississippi, Long Island, Florida. This is fun. Okay. Well, we will. Um, we're going to save all these answers, and maybe we'll we'll make a map or something. <laughs> Welcome everyone. We're so glad that you've called in today. We're going to have a lot of fun, I think, and we're going to learn a lot about how to make a difference for the causes you care about most using the power of Giving Tuesday. So let's take a look at our agenda. So first what we're going to do is um, we're going to hear from Chrisula all about Giving Tuesday and how to become a real champion by leveraging your network with a specific focus on social media. And I think we're going to see a lot of really great examples that hopefully will inspire you to think about ways that you can really contribute. Then Greg is going to talk about the connection between Giving Tuesday and Days Like It to volunteering. And um, I think that's going to be a really interesting discussion as well. And then Cheryl is going to walk us through what the Salesforce is up to and how the Salesforce.com Foundation inspires its employees and their larger network to make a difference around causes and how Giving Tuesday can play a part in that. Finally. Um, we're going to have a roundtable discussion about some issues relevant to all these topics and answer all of your questions. So we're going to be busy bees today for the next hour, or I guess now we're down to about 54 minutes, and um, hopefully we will answer all of your questions and inspire you to really make a difference. So I believe first up we have Chrisula, so let's um, hand things over to her. Thanks, Priscilla. Hi, everyone. So great to be with you today. I am uh, thrilled at hearing your resumes, uh, Greg and Cheryl, and of course, Shari, who's brought us all together. And um, I'm in excellent company, so it's just wonderful to be with you. I'm just uh, catching up to where we are on our slide deck. And I'm beyond thrilled to chat with you today about Giving Tuesday. And you'll see right off the bat where the inspiration came from. So a group of friends were sitting around one Thanksgiving dinner, and they were saying, you know, tomorrow is Black Friday, which is a crazy, crazy, crazy day for deals. And on Monday, we've got all of our internet sales happening on Cyber Monday. But where's the giving in all of that? And so they came up with the idea for Giving Tuesday. And it was initial collaboration. The idea came out of some people over at the 92nd Street Y, which is a wonderful Jewish community center in New York City, my hometown, and, um, and then also the United Nations Foundation. These two organizations have collaborated on a number of initiatives, and they both, it was like a, it was like a light bulb moment. It was like, absolutely, let's do this. So they collaborated together and brought in a whole bunch of groups. I'm going to come back to that one, actually. Um, a whole bunch of groups um, who, and Volunteer Match was right there at the beginning, of organizations that, that saw this rocket to the moon of what Giving Tuesday could represent, really putting this notion of giving up front at the beginning of the giving season and not being against you guys getting deals, all of us getting deals on those great shopping days. We're not against anything, but being for this idea of putting giving up front um, and maybe, just maybe, using a little bit of that dollars that you saved on your Black Friday and Cyber Monday shopping to give back to some of your favorite charities. So it's been um, initially a domestic movement, but it spread globally pretty quickly, and there's a number of countries that are jumping on board every day. So you can see that it's a, a host of nonprofit organizations and corporate organizations. And let me just talk you through the criteria for joining Giving Tuesday as a partner, and then I'll I'll break down a little bit about what that means. So you can be either in the United States, and I'm specifically talking domestically now, just here in the US, you can either be a 5013C or an organization that's doing something to benefit a 5013C. And that, of course, is where um, some of our big organizations come in from the private sector. Let's just talk about Giving Tuesday and where we've, we've come to. Um, over the first year, so it started in 2012, and we had half a dozen countries sort of pop their hands up and say they wanted to do something as well, but it was really a domestic movement. We had all 50 states. We had um, about 5,000 partners in that initial year. And the year-on-year -year increase in online giving from 
uh, the first year to the second was about 40 percent, in an, uh, sorry, uh, not 40 percent, that was the dollar value increase. The actual number, dollar value of total donations as uh, commented on, as recorded by Blackboard, who um, are one of many online giving portals, but they have the largest market share as of the current time, reported year-on-year -year increase of 53 percent in online donations. And then jumping to 2013, which is what you can see on this slide, um, we had more than 40 countries join us, 10,000 organizations, and uh, Blackboard reported a 90% increase in year-on-year -year online donations that they processed, and various other organizations that uh, also process um, donations reported similar sorts of increases. So it's really exciting to see all of that happening. Um, so I want to just talk you through some of the, the ways that different people have gotten involved. And some of these examples are going to be focused on fundraising. I don't want you to let, um, I don't want to leave you with the impression at any stage that that's all that Giving Tuesday is about because it most certainly isn't. And, I, and we will get to the volunteer piece, but I just want to kind of paint you an overall picture of what Giving Tuesday looked like. And um, so, Panthera, of course, had a W donation initiative. This is from uh, the first year um, in 2012. Phoenix House, which is a drug and rehabilitation centre, they have multiple locations, um, but uh, particularly uh, this initiative came from the New York group. They wrote letters of, of encouragement to people in recovery. And I, uh, this is actually one of my very favourite Giving Tuesday moments of all time because um, it, it was such a personal touch, and that's that's that piece where um, connecting with the human beings who are the beneficiaries of the causes and the organisations we care about really, to me, represents what the Giving Tuesday spirit is all about. Um, the Michael J. Fox Foundation have been big supporters um, and joined us in sharing wonderful moments of families who support their relatives living with, with Parkinson's. Um, this particular group, Global Ministries, had an, a, a, an amazing initiative globally where they were able to bring together all of their constituencies. Dress for the Success, many of you know, um, having people actually donate quality shoes for women trying to get back into the workforce, and they did a focused drive around uh, Giving Tuesday last year. Any of you Baltimore peeps, shout out to you guys. This was an amazing initiative. Baltimore, under the um, umbrella of their amazing mayor came together and set a goal as a city and said, as a city, we're going to come together and we're going to raise money for the causes that we care about as a Baltimore community. And they set a target of $5 million last year and by George they did it. It was just an incredible thing. So I want to kind of highlight Baltimore for a specific reason. There's power in communities going together. I know Greg and Cheryl, you guys are going to talk more about this as we dive in, but the power of community cannot be underestimated, whether it's an entire city like Baltimore or whether it's a, a, an entire street and a neighborhood comes together for some kind of drive or initiative or collaborative tag sale or whatever that looks like in your world. Um, try not to go it alone if you can possibly avoid it because there's great power in coming together. All the way to the White House, and I this, this is a favorite, so they tweeted, uh, in 2012 and then got a little bit more deeply involved uh, last year in 2013. Obviously, um, they're not going to come in and fundraise, but just to have that um, acknowledgement and notice from the White House, it's a really big deal and, and really, um, for me, celebrates the great American spirit that I think we all bring to special days like this, which is to provide a rallying cry and an anchor for us all to come together and, and for it to be noticed by the White House was a lot of fun. Last year we had something really special from our country's biggest philanthropists. Um, I think I saw something on the Today Show last week that they've given away uh, $35 billion, I have to check my numbers, but a massive portion of their fortune. And they captured for us last year on our site um, the essence of why they give, where that motivation comes from them. And I think you'll find as you, know, as you look at that that their motivations are pretty much the same as all of our motivations. It's about um, connecting with our children. It's about connecting with our communities. It's about coming together and doing something that's greater than all of ourselves. 
and they actually recommended a couple of their favourite charities and invited people to connect with them as well. Um, celebrities are always fun, not going to lie, and there was a great uptake last year from um, celebrities jumping on and saying, hey, Giving Tuesday, what a great idea. This is the cause I'm supporting today. Um, how about you pick your favourite cause or, or, you know, or join my favourite cause, whatever it might be. And so this list is actually just a portion of, of, the, of the names that joined us last year by shouting out to their favourite causes and it was a really exciting thing. I want to talk to you a little bit about the unselfie because you'll notice that in all of the pieces of Giving Tuesday collateral that you're seeing, you see a hashtag. Giving Tuesday was built from day one by those who um, wanted to create this as a hashtag because it was always going to be shared digitally. We want to really um, acknowledge the space that we all live in right now and this digital world and connect Giving Tuesday with that right from the beginning. And so funnily enough, some of you will notice, particularly if you have teenagers or college students, in your households or are in those categories yourselves, the selfie was a big deal, it's still a big deal. And last year, selfie was actually the word of the year. And so we were able to take a throwaway line from a friend and turn it into the unselfie. And it just went everywhere. These pictures are from volunteers in Zimbabwe. And we had a number of United Nations Development Program offices around the world set up volunteer programs, projects in their areas, and these were school kids coming together to, um, to help beautify their school and do a project at their school. Um, just giving you a feel for some of the ideas of, of, of how um, it's about something bigger than ourselves. So the unselfie, we had about 7,000 unselfies posted in the, last, in, the, um, in the couple of weeks leading up to Giving Tuesday last year, where people would post an, un an unselfie and either commit it to their favourite cause or just have people feeling good about the idea of giving back. So let's get down to nitty gritty and how you can get involved. Social media ambassadors, that's what we're calling anyone who's willing to join us and lend us their digital media profile. So I promise we won't take over your Facebook page or anything like that. What, I'd, what we would love to do though is for you to join us in a digital way by signing up on our website on givingtuesday.org. When you go to givingtuesday.org, at the very top of the screen, in fact, I'll just pull it up right now, you can see um, that we have pretty, pretty clean and, and simple uh, big red bold join button and you can jump on that page right there and either join as an organization, so then for you would sign up as a partner, or join as an individual and become a social media ambassador. What you're doing when you become a social media ambassador is that you are uh, allowing me the permission to email you once a week or so. It will get a little bit more frequent as we lead up to the big day itself um, with ideas of things you could share on social media, with events like this that are coming up, with um, really fun news stories that are happening that we think that you might be interested in. For example, today, leading on our website is a really great piece about um, how your brain changes when you give and what happens to your brain chemistry. It's, it's, a, it's a really great piece and it's uh, from a, well, it comes from a lecture from a scientist named Dr. Taylor. Just read it, you'll love it. It's like, it, giving is like crack in a good way, good crack. <laughs> um, and it and does all sorts of wonderful things to our brains. <laughs> so um, we've got communications plans and toolkits, so if you're actually wanting to organize your own um, community event. We've got all sorts of toolkits already built out there. So there have been thousands of volunteer hours um, poured into setting up a series of resources on this website so that you've got everything that you need at your fingertips. Now some of it's going to be geared specifically towards nonprofits. One of the things that we've been really trying to do as a movement is help nonprofits, particularly the smaller ones. Um, have tools at their disposal to, to up their game. It's, a, it's, it's noisy out there and so we want to do everything we can to help them, help lift them up. And so there's um, lots of ideas there, but you can always also use those for, um, for tweaking and tailoring to your own community uh, event that you might have, as I said, whether it's a street party 
whether it's a community organisation, whether you're working with your local Boys and Girls Club or local Scout or Girl Guides trip, troops or um, whatever it might look like, how you bring your community together, there's tons of resources on the site, givingtuesday.org. So just in closing, we'd love to have you join as digital ambassadors, social media ambassadors. We've got tons of resources for you from cute graphics to events to um, various uh, platforms to follow and get you social on. And in the meantime, we'd love you to be thinking about ways that you can actually organize your own volunteer events um, and happenings. One of the things I will say, just in cases of interest to you or organizations that you volunteer for, on the day of, our major media interests were for, for media um, organizations looking for things to film. So if you are willing, able and capable of pulling off a live volunteer event, that's something that we can really um, do our best to support you with in terms of local media outreach. Um, we've got um, press release toolkits, we've got all kinds of things to make that as easy as possible for you. So I'm going to hand back to, uh, to Shari and Greg and excited to talk about the next steps. Thank you, Priscilla. Um, one question came in that I think it's important to answer right away, which is, um, is there any fee associated with becoming a social media ambassador? None at all. It is uh, free as they come. So just the fee is being willing to share some things on Facebook, on your Twitter, on your Instagram, and to receive emails from us at Giving Tuesday Central and not delete us. <laughs> Great. Thank you. All right. So, Greg, it is now your turn. Excellent. Thank you. So Giving Tuesday, I, I had the pleasure of meeting uh, Henry Timms uh, earlier this year at an event at uh, the Gates Foundation. Uh, and if Giving Tuesday is not inspiring enough online with all the great work, uh, Henry and the crew that are you know, behind the scenes continuing to champion this um, are extraordinarily uh, inspiring in person. So we're proud to uh, be able to take advantage of this uh, and support it uh, really from our perspective because we understand the link uh, in the nonprofit sector between giving and volunteering. And I want to explore a little bit of that today, understanding that the audience out there is you're probably folks that are interested in getting involved in Giving Tuesday, helping to support uh, your favorite causes, and a little bit of what we're going to talk about is just sharing some of the facts about the relationship between volunteering and giving, um, and then adding a little bit of context to how you might be able to use this event, this moment, this movement uh, to get involved and support some of the causes that you really are passionate about. So what is the connection? Well, I, maybe I should start with the Giving Tuesday from Volunteer Match's point of view is not a massive day of service, nor are we trying to make it a massive day of service. A lot of people suggest that, but that's not our view of what the nonprofit sector really needs. They don't need Tuesday, December 3rd, everyone to go out and volunteer for one day um, at an organization. Typically, organizations um, you know, are looking for volunteers all year long. What we see Giving Tuesday as is a reminder of uh, the importance and the satisfaction of getting involved in giving back, and volunteering is certainly a part of it, um, and we're hoping to kind of reinforce use Giving Tuesday to reinforce that intimate connection between uh, volunteering at a cause you care about and sharing your resources and supporting and giving back to those same causes. So here are some of the facts that uh, you may or may not know. Two-thirds of those who volunteer also donate to the nonprofits where they volunteer. Uh, this is a, you know, kind of a truism in the nonprofit space uh, for anyone who's been in it for a while. Uh, that people who volunteer are far more likely to be donors uh, than people who don't volunteer. Um, and this is driven by a real satisfaction and an intimacy that comes along with getting involved with an organization um, and that it's only natural that you'd want to uh, support financially the organizations that you're supporting with your time. On average, volunteers tend to be more generous and more giving than non-volunteers. And by the way, this, uh, this data is taken from a national survey that um, you, you've seen facts like this probably in other places perhaps, but this is a uh, study that was done a few years ago, uh, a national survey that we did with Fidelity Charitable Gift Fund, 
um, and reached out to um, you know a national audience uh, and did a survey to really understand the relationship between giving and volunteering. It's available online. You see a footnote here. Uh, just look for volunteerism and charitable giving, the Fidelity Charitable Gift and Fund, uh, and you'll find a bunch of links to it. Uh, it's still available online in a variety of places. But this is important to just remember that volunteers tend to be the sorts of people uh, that make the best donors and make the best long-term champions for the causes that they get involved with. Uh, giving money, writing a check is great, uh, but the folks who really make organizations thrive are the people who are giving both their time uh, and their money. And here's a really, really interesting study that just doesn't get enough play. Uh, and I encourage all of you out there to go and kind of track it down online. Um, it's a study that was done by Stanford University and some other researchers. Uh, the report is called The Happiness of Giving, The Time Ask Effect. Uh, Sherry and I both reread it again this week. And make no, mistake, make, make no mistake, it is the dullest reading you can find anywhere in the world. Uh, but the research and the conclusions are profound. And what the researchers found in a study at Stanford is that if you ask someone to volunteer their time before you ask them uh, to volunteer money, you not only increase the likelihood that people will give money, but you also increase the money, the, the value or the total amount of money that was given. And the study was very simple. They did it as a research study at Stanford, and they literally brought people into the office. They gave a brief introduction to a nonprofit organization, and they said, you know, how likely would you be to volunteer at this organization, uh, scale of 1 to 10? Um, uh, the respondents would answer, and then they would say, um, you know, would you like to make a donation to this organization? Um, and it was remarkable. The research shows uh, a dramatic increase as much as two times uh, the giving that would result from this approach. And it's, you know, there's, an old, uh, there's an old anecdote in the nonprofit sector that if you want, you know, if you want to get money out of someone, um, you know, it, I think the way it goes is if you want money, uh, then you should uh, you ask for advice first. If you, want, uh, if you want advice, ask for money. And this kind of plays into this overall theme that volunteering is a profoundly um, useful and effective point of engagement um, for building relationships that result in giving. You all know that out there. And I think the, the, the message coming from us today is if you have favorite causes out there that you're already involved with or you're looking to get involved with, Giving Tuesday is an exceptional time to get people involved in just sharing the passion and enthusiasm that you have for a particular cause as a bit of a gateway to greater involvement in giving as the year unfolds. So that's, um, that's kind of the big picture. We're saying Giving Tuesday is a time not just to give your money, but to give your time, give both. Don't be afraid to do that and recognize that the nonprofit sector can't live with one or the other. Uh, they need both. They need people who are willing to give their time and money and really get involved to champion the causes that they care about most. Just some quick examples that I think are fun out there right now that uh, you know, might not be the things that you would think about when you think about volunteering or supporting an organization that you care about. Um, right now on Volunteer Match, as of yesterday afternoon, there's organizations that are looking for film editors uh, so you can get involved and really focus on particular skills and interests that you want to share. This can be a gateway to getting involved with organizations where um, you might not have expected they could uh, use your help um, and then build a longer relationship. Grandma's House of Hope, uh, this is a great opportunity. Um, you can uh, get involved, help bring Christmas cheer to a woman in need this holiday season. And this is something you can not only get involved with, or it's an idea that you could share with your favorite organization. Um, and help them see the possibilities of inviting and engaging more people you know, in and around Giving Tuesday uh, to advance their cause and their mission. Join an award-winning team of volunteers engaging via social involvement. Uh, this is an organization that is uh, doing senior retired and senior volunteer programs. Um, and there's a, you know, just a, a great way to frame up a volunteer opportunity and a point of engagement to get more people involved. Um, 
come grow the U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary. You know, the, the, the organizations that are looking for help and could benefit from Giving Tuesday, you know, are not just food banks. They're not just, uh, you know, the Red Crosses of the world. There's a wide and diverse variety of nonprofit institutions and organizations that are looking for help and they're looking for champions. Uh, so don't stop at the usual suspects uh, as you think about Giving Tuesday this year. Um, of course, you know, joining a board of directors, uh, leadership development, that's an area that uh, as, a, as a volunteer, um, you know, nonprofits are always um, looking for exceptional leaders and advocates and champions. Um, this year, you know, Giving Tuesday could be a time where you, you know, think about making a 2014 commitment uh, to really looking for a nonprofit organization where you'd be willing to serve on the board uh, and take your service to a whole other level. Um, and then there's, you know, just the more traditional getting involved really based, you know, on your desire to just be involved with a cause that you care about most or something that's personal to you. Um, my seven-year-old son is uh, autistic. Um, it's not difficult for me to care deeply about Autism Speaks and to get involved. And we know that there are millions of folks out there that share uh, a passion for particular issues that are very personal and very um, immediate to you and your family. And Giving Tuesday is, a, you know, is the time to share that with other folks uh, and get involved with the things that are most you know, personal to you. So. Um, I want to uh, just kind of do another shout out to uh, Giving Tuesday for creating such a contagious opportunity for people to get, you know, get involved and give back. You know, I, hope, um, I hope at the end of this webinar you are as inspired as we all are uh, to go back out into the community and find opportunities to take advantage um, of this incredible, incredible movement uh, to support the causes that you care about most. And I want to hand it back to Sherry uh, so Cheryl can uh, bring us home. Great, thank you, Greg. Um, all right, so now we just saw some of some examples of what um, of what nonprofits are doing to engage volunteers, um, and how uh, how you could um, you know get connected with a nonprofit organization in various ways to make a difference. And Giving Tuesday is kind of a great excuse to do that, a great motivation. Um, and now Cheryl's going to give us an idea of what Salesforce.com and the foundation is doing to get people fired up to make a difference um, in this way as well. So Cheryl, take it away. Great. Thank you, Sherry. And hi again to everyone. Um, I just wanted to uh, giggle a little. I love those bios at the beginning. Um, and Greg and Chrisula, it's just so wonderful to be on this webinar. Um, both of your work is so inspiring. and. Um, I have to admit, you know, I became passionate about volunteerism and supporting and inspiring people to give back and um, don donate their time and their skills to nonprofits because when I was that program director, I was often sitting with my head in my hands thinking, oh my gosh, if we only had more people, more resources, we'd really be able to deliver on our mission. So. Um, it's really great to join this webinar and, um, and uh, you know, be a part of this movement and meet all of you who have joined us and, and also want to inspire more people to volunteer and give back. So um, all that to say, I was asked to tell a little bit more about Salesforce Foundation and um, our culture of giving back at Salesforce, um, share a little bit about our philanthropic model and the role that volunteerism plays. So to do that, I want to give you a little bit more history about Salesforce.com and the Salesforce Foundation. For those of you who don't know about Salesforce.com, we're the number one enterprise cloud company in the world. Um, and we started 15 years ago. And um, from day one, our uh, brilliant CEO and founder, Mark Benioff, um, started Salesforce.com with, with three goals in mind. One, to create a new um, technology model on the cloud, two, uh, to offer the software as a service, so a new um, subscription business model, and three, to create a new corporate philanthropic model, which he did. Um, so uh, the Salesforce Foundation was also started day one of Salesforce.com, 
And we created this new integrated corporate philanthropic model that leverages the very best of our company assets um, to give back to communities. So we give back. Um, we call our model 111 because we give back 1% of our product, 1% of our equity, and 1% of our employees' time. Um, so because of that, I think we've been, you know, we, we feel we've been really effective in delivering on our mission to leverage Salesforce.com product equity and time to improve communities around the world. And in the last 15 years, you can see here, there's over 22,000 nonprofits and higher education organizations that are able to run their businesses on our um, product. We also, as a foundation, given away over $65 million in grants. And um, incredibly, our employees have given over 620,000 hours of service. So um, I'll say we're really, really proud of our achievements at the foundation. And I think what's even maybe more incredible is to see uh, the other companies that are um, have been inspired by the model and now following suit. So you can see some examples here on the screen of other companies like Dropbox and GoPro and Google that have also adopted the 111 integrated um, philanthropic models of their companies and are also giving back their product equity and employee time. So very exciting. So let me drill down a little bit deeper and tell you more about um, volunteering at Salesforce. So 1% of our time in, um, means 48 hours per year. So 1% of your working time equals 48 hours. So all employees at Salesforce get 48 hours of paid time off to volunteer. And um, not only are, are these volunteer hours given, but they're really a goal. And I say that because um, all of our managers and often, uh, you know, our peers and our friends are really quick to recognize each other and celebrate our employees who've made that large contribution to giving back and, and hit that goal of um, giving 48 hours of volunteer time. Additionally, uh, 48 hours of volunteer time is incentivized, so all of our employees who um, meet their goal each year given a thousand dollars to contribute to their favorite charity. Oops. Additionally, I, um, our volunteer uh, program is really flexible. So I think it's great that employees um, get to choose not only when they volunteer but also the activity. Um, so you know our employees choose all kinds of things. They're out tutoring students at the local school, um, participating in fundraising walks and runs in their communities, serving meals to the homeless um, around the holidays. It's really flexible so people can fit it into um, their busy schedules. Um, uh, but it's also you know, really fun. And I think um, it's great that you get the opportunity to choose um, what is important to you. And so we even have some employees who will say that they're 48 hours and um, will choose to travel abroad and, and work um, in a community um, of need somewhere globally. So um, a private integrated philanthropic model um, means that giving back is owned by everyone at the company, not just our foundation. And I think our employees really love this aspect of their job. You know, I all of us um, probably agree on the line, volunteering feels really good, um, and that's just one of the reasons that we do it. I think what's great at Salesforce, and I feel this too, is um, you get to do something that feels good, that you love, and on top of that, share that with um, your colleagues and your company. So if volunteering at Salesforce feels a little bit like a um, volunteering utopia, it is. <laughs> and I realize that um, maybe some of you on the line maybe um, aren't you know, at a place where um, giving back is so baked into your culture. And I think there's still plenty, plenty of opportunities, obviously, for you to get involved. And 
Um, there's so many great tools out there. Uh, Greg and Priscilla, I use tools from Giving Tuesday and Volunteer Maps already. So, um, you know, both of those are, are great resources. Um, and I'll just share, you know, a couple of my own other tips. I think um, one, way, one thing you can do if you're just getting started and you want to organize your first volunteer activity um, and you want to get your company involved, you could do a little research and see if your company already has a 501c3 or if, um, even if they don't have a 501c3, see if your company sponsors volunteer events in some other ways, maybe through grants. Um, if so, that would be a great place or a great way to find a nonprofit for you to work with. Um, let's see. And additionally, I think um, one thing to keep in mind when you're designing your volunteer event is, uh, you know, I think everybody's going to be excited about volunteering, but it's important when you design events to make it easy and um, the number one thing I, or I hear two things from people when I, when, you know, I ask why, you know, why haven't you taken the opportunity to volunteer? It's usually, one, I don't know how to start, or two, I just don't have time. It's never, I don't want to do it. And so, um, when you design a volunteer event, it's really important to make it easy and um, also to make it fun for the people who want to get involved. Uh, the last thing that I'll share is uh, we at Salesforce Foundation also have some great resources to get you started, um, and you can find those on our Salesforce.com Foundation website under Share the Model, uh, and that's a you know another resource to find some some tools on how to design your program or or your giving back model. So um, with that. I think I will um, turn it back over to Sherry so we can take some questions. And I just want to say, you know, big shout out to Salesforce for, you know, connecting so clearly the relationship between volunteering uh, and giving and, you know, putting their product to good use in the nonprofit marketplace. And I know, you know, a lot of the work that we do in the corporate marketplace has benefited from leadership from organizations like Salesforce to really make giving back a part, an important part of corporate culture. And I know that Giving Tuesday for us is another great excuse to be going out into the corporate world and encouraging more organizations to follow in Salesforce's, you know, footsteps. Um, and it's another, just a, another uh, opportunity for us to remind corporations about the importance of giving back. So I want to say thank you for all that. So, okay, wonderful. Well, thanks, Cheryl. Um, and I think that gave us all um, a really awesome glance into everything that Salesforce is doing and also some ideas for um, how each of us can um, take part in and design volunteer events. So just to stick with you for one more moment, Cheryl, um, I have one question. So let's say um, folks on the line here, they whether their companies have formal volunteer programs or not, some of them might be interested in um, leveraging their not just their passion, but some of the programs in place for Giving Tuesday. It, let's say that um, some of the employees at Salesforce were interested in doing that. How would you recommend to the employees at Salesforce that they should you know, take part in Giving Tuesday? What are some tips you'd give them? Oh, sure. Um, well, I think two things. Um, one, uh, I mentioned already that our volunteer program is flexible, right, and people get to choose the volunteer opportunities that they get to, that they want to participate in. Additionally, what I didn't mention before is we at the foundation will also organize volunteer activities, and we will be coordinating some um, Giving Tuesday specific activities. So my answer to Salesforce employees would um, first be, you know, if you, you know you want to do something or you know you want to give back, you just don't know where to start, start with us because we'll connect you. Or um, I would say a uh, couple other tips to get started is, the, you know, finding the right um, nonprofit or the right cause to work with. And I think um, most people probably have that already in mind, right? Um, you'll, you work in your community or um, on some interest area that 
passion that you're passionate about. Um, and making sure that when you uh, approach the organization that you want to um, work with, that they're ready to work with you. I think um, I shared my example of I was always just you know begging for volunteers or resources or some help when I was working in under-resourced nonprofit, and I and I, that is true, but. Um, not every nonprofit is going to be able to coordinate a huge um, volunteer event. So make sure when you're working with a nonprofit, you come up with a scope and an event and that's reasonable and expectations are clear on both sides, both what the nonprofit would need and benefit from, as well as um, it's, as well as being clear that it's an opportunity that you would be interested in and fulfilled by doing. Um, and then my next thing would be to socialize the event um, and get other people involved. Um, I think Greg, you know, also mentioned, or Kasula, I forget, it's always more fun, right, if you're volunteering with others. So um, use those networks, use your internal networks, and use your external networks to promote the event, um, get people excited about it. Um, use some of the tools that Christina has provided for us to um, to share, you know, what you have going on and um, get people on board. And I mentioned to make it easy, so uh, make sure that you as the organizer have clarity on what your expectations are for the people that will be joining you. Um, you know, where do they need to be? If you can do things, fun, do some fun things like get shirts for everyone, um, that you have all of that information lined up and everybody um, knows where they need to be um, with what shirt on. <laughs> Cheryl, can I just add on to that actually? This is Chris Sula. Um, I, I just want to say a quick word about press and I know that um, sometimes everyone shudders when they hear that word and think, well that's not why I'm doing this, it's not about media attention. Plus, it's a whole lot of work. I'm very fearful of the press. You know, there's just sort of lots of, of reactions that we have, and they're very human ones and very real. But um, I wanted to say a word about that. If it makes sense to have an opportunity to put your nonprofit in the community spotlight, then these are the sorts of ways to do it with volunteer days, with extra special fundraising drives, or what, whatever it happens to look like. Um, so I just kind of think beyond your own maybe discomfort with the, with the media side of it and really think about what's going to be the, of most benefit to getting your favorite cause's name out there if it's appropriate. Um, so just, yeah, just want to like get people to think about that in creative ways and, and don't be frightened to reach out to the press because they're desperate for content. They want to tell good new, news stories as well. They can't tell the good news stories if we don't tell them where to find them. Thanks, Chrisula. I think that's such an important point, and I think it goes really well with what Cheryl was talking about, because what's so special about a day like Giving Tuesday is that it really enables anyone, whether you are a current volunteer or just looking to get involved, whether you have a program at work or not, whether you know a lot about nonprofit work or not, to, to go out and make a difference. You can organize an event. You can become a social media ambassador. You can get press attention. Those are all great ways to make a difference, and anyone should feel empowered and excited to go out and do that. So that's, what I, that's one thing I'm really taking away from this. Yeah, for sure. I think uh, you see so many um, you see so many campaigns that are hard to participate and share in, but Giving Tuesday, you know, was really designed and inspired from the ground up to just create an opportunity for people to use it as an excuse to really support whatever it is that they care about. Um, it's not like it's a it's a fundraising drive for a particular organization, uh, and that's very unique and very special. And I think you know obviously the reason why it's become so contagious uh, in a good way on social media and in other media venues. Yeah, and I just want to follow up on that, Greg. Thank you so much for that. Um, I think if if kids in Zimbabwe can get together and and have a volunteer project in their school, all the way to um, an ice skating event in Manhattan with John Legend, with J.C. Penney, like there's anything and everything goes. This is platform agnostic, so no one's saying you have to donate through a particular platform. No one's saying you have to give to a certain cause or even a certain type of cause. No one's even saying you have to give money. It, it really, literally, physically 
emotionally, spiritually, intellectually on every level is meant to be just this great celebration of who we are as a nation, as a world. We're givers, that's what we do, it's what pushes all of our, our buttons and it's, and it's the face that we want to have represented out there in our communities uh, and across the entire world, literally. Awesome. Yeah. So um, but this question has actually come in a couple times, so I just want to make sure it's absolutely clear for everyone. When we're talking about volunteering for Giving Tuesday or you know, doing something for Giving Tuesday, does it have to be on that day of Giving Tuesday or what, you know? Yeah, it, it's, a, it's a great question and I'll take that one. Um, so ideally we want people to really have a surge around that day, but if it makes sense for your community to do something on the Monday night or the weekend prior, then of course, of course, whatever makes the most sense for the organization that you're trying to benefit um, or the community that you're working with. But, but definitely we want to have um, the greatest possible surge around that day, mostly because it is such a noisy time with Black Friday and Cyber Monday that um, Giving Tuesday doesn't necessarily get its moment in, in the sun until you get to that day. Um, so short version, whatever works for you, shorter version, as close to the actual day is ideal. Um, but having said that, we are, you know, the social media conversation is happening now. It's actually happening all year round. And a whole bunch of people who are Giving Tuesday friends and family have used the hashtag um, or even made every Tuesday a Giving Tuesday in their communities. So people take it and run with it and do what they want with it and make it their own. Um, so, but please feel free to join the conversation, hashtag Giving Tuesday, wherever you happen to spend your most, the most of your time on digital media. So uh, whether it's on Instagram, Facebook, Google, uh, Twitter, of course, um, that's probably where we're the busiest and the most active, but, but we're everywhere. So um, join that giving Tuesday, hashtag Giving Tuesday conversation wherever you are. I feel a little bit like we're the, the, the retailer that's preparing early for the, uh, the big surge of giving. And I think, you know, while there'll be a massive concentration of activity uh, on Giving Tuesday itself, that's not going to happen without the people who are listening in today, right now, kind of getting geared up and prepared for it um, and, and, and kind of plotting out how they want to use Giving Tuesday uh, to support the causes that they care most about. And you know, signing up to be an ambassador, uh, encouraging your corporation to you know organize some events and activities around Giving Tuesday, or just sharing it with your friends and family uh, are all things that you can get started with now, so that this this coming Giving Tuesday is the biggest, best, and most Giving Tuesday ever. I love that. Yes, amen. <laughs> what are we doing on time? Just got a few more minutes. A few more minutes. So um, I'm going through some of the questions that are coming through. Um, there was one question about Giving Tuesday in Canada. And so, um, Chrisula, do you folks work with them there? Is this an international thing? Yeah, great question. So we've got various countries that have put their hands up and said, hey, this is a great idea. We don't necessarily have Black Friday, although Cyber Monday really has become a global thing. So. The Black Friday uh, element to the to the Giving Tuesday narrative is is particularly focused in the U.S., but um, but the concept of it has full global application. So um, in Latin America, we have a group who have put together the the um, Spanish speaking version of that Un Parida, and um, the Giving Tuesday Canada folks work very closely with us. So they run their own website and they're building their own partnerships groups. Um, with Canadian-based companies and organizations. Uh, I would say if you are a Canadian-based company or a Canadian-based nonprofit, that I dive in through Giving Tuesday Canada. And you can get to all of the international sites through our website as well if you're trying to see what countries we're, we, we have partners in. However, from a social media ambassador perspective, I would just um, come in through the main website if that's the way that you're going to connect to the campaign. Um, because mm -hmm. that's where you'll get all of the materials and the toolkits and, and all of um, and the regular emails, uh, and that's how I would approach that, depending on w whether you're coming from the partnership side or from an individual side. Wonderful. So um, 
One, one more quick question, and then I have another meaty one. Um, are there Giving Tuesday t-shirts? We printed a few last year. Um, we're operating on a pretty lean budget, and so we haven't we haven't produced those as yet. Um, it's certainly something that I can look into if we feel like there's some demand. Um, but also, all the logos are available on the website, and if you want to grab those logos and incorporate them into your own event T-shirts, have at it. They're all there. There's high resolution files for you to download and incorporate into your own designs. To bring your own T-shirt holiday. Yeah, I mean. I yeah. Think yeah, because then you know people can go onto Dazzle or Cafe Press or wherever and create their own T-shirts. Exactly. You know, sell those as a support for a nonprofit. That could be a really fun campaign. Um, yeah, and just in, in wrapping up into your own um, branding and whatever it is you want to do for your charity of choice, you can link that into the Giving Tuesday stuff. Yeah. Cool. So okay, one final. We have time for one more big question that everyone can can contribute an answer to. So um, a, a bunch of different uh, questions have come in from folks who are involved with an organization or not, uh, but who really want to get involved for Giving Tuesday with the cause that they care about and are wondering what's the best way to build excitement about their volunteer event or their project, not just within their own networks or within their communities, but also, for example, getting support from local politicians or business leaders. How do they make their events and their projects stand out from the pack? Great question. I'll take first stab, if I may, and then Greg and Cheryl, I'd really value your expertise and advice as well. Um, firstly, just in our toolkit collection, we have a proclamation um, toolkit. So if you want your local mayor to call um, December 2nd, Giving Tuesday in your town or city, we've got a template there for you to do that. We've had a number of mayors and um, civic leaders come on board from um, the former mayor of New York, Mayor Bloomberg, all the way to the uh, mayor of LA, to Detroit, to Baltimore, as I mentioned earlier, but also small town America. We're expecting some great declarations coming from some regional centers and smaller towns across the country, and those are starting to come in as well. So. That's a really fun way to, um, to be going to your community leaders and saying, hey, we've got this great day. I'm going to participate in this way. And here's an example of something that's happening locally in your community. But it's part of a bigger movement. We'd love you to declare this Giving Tuesday day. Um, and then in terms of the continual drumbeat, there is, there's so many resources at your disposal. So on our website right now, there's a, a webinar that happened a couple of weeks ago, and Eventbrite was one of our guests. And you can, if you go to our video section, you can um, you can see that download, download that, or watch that webinar. And Eventbrite take us through all of their steps to hosting a successful event. Um, and they're actually doing another one very soon in a couple of weeks. I think it's actually next week, um, with social media for nonprofits and Eventbrite. Um, diving into some even more detailed tactics on event and best social media strategies for nonprofits. So you can kind of you don't have to be a nonprofit yourself to absorb all of the information in those toolkits and and apply them to your own to your own happenings. I'll just say this is Cheryl, and I'll just say I think that part of the magic of Giving Tuesday uh, it gives you this whole new platform to elevate your cause and get the word out and all the toolkits and communications are already there so everything you would need to uh, to to build up the cause that you already care about and push it into this national and now international stage and platform already exists so it's a, a it's a great day to rally um, behind your cause and get other people excited, and all of the tools that Crystal just created and listed for us are, are there for you to leverage. Yeah, I would just say if you're out there and you're, you know, you're looking to take advantage of it, if you're already volunteering with an organization and just looking to do more, you know, sharing with their, you know, kind of the team that you're working with, um, what you know about Giving Tuesday and what are the plans and how you can be helpful, uh, you know, that's you know, that's certainly one way. If you don't yet have an organization that you're supporting or involved with, you know, now is a time, great time to sign up as an ambassador with Giving Tuesday and just kind of be a general champion or spend some time on places like Volunteer Match or your, you know, in, with your corporation if you happen to have an employee program um, and kind of take advantage of all the tools that are out there 
uh, to kind of spearhead your own little ad adventure on Giving Tuesday to get more people involved around uh, the cause that you care about passionately. So this is a do-it-yourself holiday. That's the best part about it. <laughs> I just have to give a huge shout out to you guys at Volunteer Match because I'm so impressed with your work. I have been for some time. I love the fact that organizations can come to you and spell out what they need and that so you really, people are able to really tailor the needs with the wants rather than just a bunch of people showing up and say, hey, we'll do this for you and actually they don't really need that. And I, I just have so much admiration for what you've built here. So huge kudos and congrats. It's a joy to be a part of this with you. It's our pleasure. Thank you. All right. Well, it is now um, the end of the hour or the top of the next one. So um, in the interest of everyone's time, so we can all take what we've learned and what we've heard here today and go out and do something with it and make a difference, um, we're going to end. Thank you, Chrisula, Greg, and Cheryl for sharing with us your knowledge and ideas. And um, we're rem reminder everyone, we're going to be sending an email over the next couple days with links to the recording and the slide deck as well as some additional resources and ways to get connected. So look out for that. Thank you everyone for joining us and I hope that you are inspired to go out, find the cause you care about, and um, get started. Awesome. Thank you so Take much care, everyone. for everyone. Thank you. Thank you everyone. All right. Bye-bye. <laughs>